I'm Chetan, this is Sandeepa. I finished my graduation in uh, 1993. I was never a studious person throughout my life. I did, edu I did graduation because that's the minimum qualification needed to apply for a uh, white college job. In 20 years of working life, I switched uh, 11 jobs, started working as a computer operator in desktop publishing house. I worked as a graphic designer, user interface designer, animator, game developer. My last job was with advertising agency from Mumbai. Purpose of life was switch to a better job, earn money, and live a better life. So how to break this vicious circle was an obvious question always on my mind. I was pursuing photography as a hobby. Photography is my get-going tool in travels. So I started taking thousands of pictures in the travel. And some of them I like to visit again and again. I'm going to show you them now. So Rohit, and uh, while, you, while you are having a look at them, these pictures, I would like to relay, uh, think of your childhood days. So going back to the picture, Rohit and Ois, they are from village Pingwan near Rajbal in Kashmir. This uh, ground surfing game is their daily evening activity. No fancy gaming console required, just a wooden plank with wheels. Ashwini and Sarita, they are two sisters. They, they, uh, their parents ran a dhaba in Naukuchiatal. Uh, we had a dinner there previous night. While these girls were very shy, we went there again next day morning for breakfast. While we ate, these girls played with us and they gave us some fun field shot. And we saw the love and hate relationship between them. <laughs> these Guja kids, uh, they, are, they are from Rajori. We saw them uh, uh, on the way to uh, uh, Thazwas Glacier in Sonmag. So, uh, Gujas are shepherds, and these Gujas kids attended, had attended nomadic school, and as a proof, they recited us some numbers, alphabets, songs, and dance. And they were happy to uh, receive re uh, chocolates as their reward. This guy was uh, playing a mirror game, putting a ref uh, reflection of the sun on the ground. The light was what caught our attention. On the way to uh, Rangdum, uh, uh, this is a Rangdum on the way to Janskar. We saw these kids playing near the stupa when we, our, our truck was just halted for lunch. So, so what's the common factor between all these kids? So they all are living close to the nature. They are living, they are happy for the simple things they are doing in their life. They are curious and more eager to know everything they are exposed to. All what they need is clean air, open spaces. Do you want to live that life again? Keep traveling. Sandipa will tell you our experience about the travel. So Chetan and I met around seven years ago. We met through a marriage bureau. It was our love for travel that brought us together. And within a few months of that first meeting, we were husband and wife. <laughs> Life went on as it does usually for a newly married couple in Mumbai. I'm an electronics engineer, so my days were spent designing circuits, writing assembly language programs, sometimes visiting the factory floors. We would get to spend like a few hours each night, have dinner and go off to sleep. On monsoon weekends, we would go for treks in the Sayadris. On longer weekends, go a little further away, but to obviously crowded places. Every time we would come back with dreams of this longer, bigger adventure. Sometime in our life we must would be the standard end of that conversation. As time went by, we would see lesser of each other. Our life started following this fixed, predictable pattern. We knew this was going to lead to lesser time, fewer adventures, but definitely higher EMIs. Something had to change, and it had to change now. We needed to step out of our lives and have a look at it from the outside. 
we needed a tool that could help us teach what could be changed and how we could change it. It wasn't really that difficult putting two and two together. The more we thought about this, the calls of those bigger, louder, louder adve uh, longer adventures just became louder. Internet research threw tons of examples of people who had been traveling long term. So we decided to make long term travel the tool of our transformation. We chose to travel in South America, the continent we knew very little of. They spoke the languages that we didn't speak at all. So we traveled deep down south at the peak of the southern hemisphere winter. The five months that we spent in South America, we saw nature in its grand glory. I remember the first time uh, I laid my eyes on Pereto Moreno. It's the world's only growing glacier. It's a size larger than the city of Buenos Aires, sprawled across Lago Argentino. And because it's constantly growing, parts of the glacier sometimes hit landmass. And it causes huge chunks of ice to come crashing down into the lake waters. It causes ripples higher than the ocean waves. And the sound of that crash is louder than the loudest firecrackers you've ever heard. We were mesmerized by that sight. We realized we were staring at it open-mouthed only when our jaws started to hurt. <laughs> In the tour of the Salar de Uyuni, we saw lakes colored green and red and huge rocks sculpted by the howling winds. And of course, we saw the flattest place on Earth, the salt flats of Uyuni. We spent 10 days over the meandering golden snake, that is the Amazon River, flowing through the Amazon rainforest. We saw the life that it, protect, uh, life that it supported around and the Earth that it protected as it flowed through different countries. At the Iguazu waterfalls, we saw the devil's throat amassing gallons of water each second. Uh, when the sun came out, a beautiful rainbow appeared across the waterfall as if greeting us warmly. So when you're seeing these unbelievable, unreal wonders of nature in the far corners of the earth, you get this strong sense of possession. You aren't thinking the salt flats belong to Bolivia or the Perito Moreno belongs to Argentina. You're thinking how lucky you are that this wonder of nature is right here on this planet, on Mother Earth. You're thinking how privileged you are to be able to see it. You're thinking it's all yours, it's all ours, and you want to do everything that you can to protect it, to keep it safe and to keep it intact. Travel has taught us to connect with others with whom we don't have much in common. We were in the city of Sucre, that's the capital of Bolivia. This was around two months into our that's a site from Sucre. It's mm -hmm. around, this was around two months into our travels in South America. And in Bolivia, we faced our first major language crisis. Almost nobody speaks English, and our knowledge of Spanish was still just the basics. But we did know that chicken is pollo. So one night, we entered this uh, eatery that served only chicken. A girl came to take our order, and very knowingly, we said, pollo, per, uh, pollo per favor, chicken please. She started asking us many more questions. We didn't understand anything. Finally, exasperated, she just pointed to her legs, her breasts, did these flapping actions. <laughs> she wanted to know what part of the chicken we would prefer. We laughed out loudly. Yeah, we just showed her to give us the leg piece and enjoyed our meal that night. Cab drivers in Rio de Janeiro have given us perfect directions without a spoken word and insisted that they help us reach our destination because we are visiting and new to their city. This one time we were walking down the streets of Tarabuco. It's a remote village high up in the Andean mountains. It's so remote that even Spanish isn't commonly spoken there. People still speak the native Quechua language. We were playing with these uh, little kids in the village, taking their pictures. An old man saw us doing this, and he approached us. He tapped on our shoulders, and he directed us forward. So we just fought it, started following him, and he took us to his home. There he changed his ceremonial hat, and uh, he changed the hat that he was wearing and put this more ceremonial one. And then he pointed to our camera. So he wanted us to picture him in this ceremonial hat. <laughs> So taking his cue, everybody in the family started posing for their own pictures. When they learned that we were from India, they were fascinated at having met somebody from so far away. They then wanted me to pose in their family portrait. The portrait they would probably never see again. 
but that family and us will always have that one shared moment together understanding each other doesn't take too much of verbal written or digital communication all it needs is like basic human interest travel is this great diy tool that pushes you constantly to come up with workable solutions where's the nearest supermarket which aisle in the supermarket uh, stocks the milk how much is a boliviano a sole or a real or a, a peso worth what's the currency exchange rate how much cash is it safe to carry in your pockets what are the bank withdrawal charges you have to relearn all of this stuff that you take for granted back home you was you teach a new place you figure all this stuff out then in a week's time it's a different city maybe even a different country you have to unlearn all that you've just learned and start with a clean slate travel teaches you to be outside of your comfort zone all the time and you start loving it people circumstances locations they keep changing constantly and adapting to this change quickly that becomes your way of life travel also gives you this rare opportunity to form your own perspectives you don't have to rely on what others say or what you read to form your own opinions every picture that we had seen of the cholos and the cholitas these are the natives of the andean mountains so every picture of theirs had shown them have these crooked brown stained teeth that's because they all chew coca leaves now these coca leaves are the raw material to make cocaine and that's legal the coca leaves are legal in bolivia and peru and everybody chews it all the time they are really bitter and we wondered why would someone want to do that especially when it makes your teeth look like that not until we were climbing the 200 steps up the high altitude isla del sol with these cholitas lugging huge sacks of luggage on their back did we realize the importance of chewing those coca leaves when every breath that you take hurts and you have to do this several times each day just to earn your living it doesn't really matter what your teeth look like back home we were trekking through the forests of chhatpal in kashmir and uh, when we felt hungry we told our guide to take us to some place where we could get some food he took us to a shop in his village and he was like yeah you'll get everything here chips biscuits everything we asked him if he could get some fruits or apricots instead he just nodded dismissively and he was like what's an apricot going to do to fill your stomach have these chips instead they'll like you know it will be good for you it's come from it comes from your cities we were taken aback by this assumption and thought it was time to make him aware of the reality so we told him like these chips are really unhealthy to have and it's good to have fruits he was stunned he thought for a moment and then he asked us you mean we send you all this healthy stuff from our villages to your cities and what you send us back is junk instead <laughs> this is the guy in his village i mean we just had to tell him yeah that's exactly what happens until we traveled in south america we didn't really know what cold meant i mean here in mumbai when the temperature drops to 18 we say it's winter 12 degrees celsius is severe winter right this one night during our tour of the salar de uyuni we spent the night in this remote sanctuary at minus 20 degrees celsius without any heaters though we were laden with like seven layers of clothing the slightest movement we did sent chills down our spine now we know what a cold wave does to somebody who is going through it not until we were lost in the forest of pehelgam at night did we realize what it felt like to be lost in an unknown land without any sign of help earlier argentina was just this long country somewhere far away today it's where our friends laura and nico live bolivia is where my uh, spanish teacher andrea lives and machu picchu is where we climbed up a mountain with our canadian friend farzi discussing an iranian cafe that his grandfather had once opened here in mumbai So travel puts you through all these moments which you probably wouldn't sitting at home. It sensitizes you to what's happening around you. It makes you aware of the reality that is around you. You learn to put yourself in the other person's shoes 
because probably you have met someone like that other person and maybe just for a little while lived through their lives. A few years back, we would spend our time reading travel stories of people who would go from one country to the other. Their tales of overland crossing, where you cross the borders of the country without taking a flight. This overland crossing fascinated us. We thought it was impossible to do that with an Indian passport. But in our first long-term travel in South America, we crossed from Brazil into Argentina by bus. We walked from Argentina into Bolivia, and we entered a, a, back into Brazil through Peru in a cargo boat, crossing one of the remotest border crossings in the world in the Amazon rainforest. Thinking of all of this stuff, it felt like a man monumental task. I mean, we didn't even dream of these things. But now, looking back, it just feels all so easy. It was as simple as moving one step ahead. Life has uh, travel has taught us that life really is very simple. We have learned to live with less things and thoughts. To travel, we have learned that no dream is impossible to achieve. Thank you.